Hi all, thanks a lot for watching this short video on Cyber PAM Azure Key Vault networking consideration. So we have started hearing few requests from the customers and prospects around networking options customer can leverage upon whenever they try to connect Cybrac Vault to Azure Key Vault. So that's why I thought of creating this short video. So without further ado, let me kickstart my presentation. So this is a brief agenda I have put together. Uh, again, I'll be keeping my presentation very brief and we will be spending majority of our time on setting up Cyberac Vault with AKB using private link option. So within Azure Key Vault, so there are primarily three different networking options available. The first one is called public endpoint all network where there is no firewall enabled at all. The second option is called public endpoint selected network where firewall is enabled and <clears throat> traffic shall be permitted only for a very specific Azure subnet or Azure vNet only. Last but not the least is the private endpoint. Here the best part is firewall is enabled as well as traffic never ever hit onto the public internet at all. So whereas in both public endpoint all network and public endpoint selected network option, traffic will always hit on the internet. In terms of the recommendation, as you can notice, uh, so most of the time, if traffic is not hitting at, at, hitting at the internet, so it is considered as the most secure option. So that's where I believe private endpoint is considered as the most secure approach. Though in all the approaches, we can see either traffic is hitting on the internet or staying on the Microsoft backbone, but still from an authentication standpoint, applications still have to authenticate before they can perform any kind of a data plane action within Azure Key Vault. So there are two main authentication methods, Azure AD-based authentication or a access policy-based authentication. So within Cybrac, Cybrac provides ARM templates. So you can download all these ARM templates from the GitHub page. So whenever you are deploying the Cybrac vault using this default templates, so you will notice uh, Cybrac leverages upon, uh, leverages upon the public endpoint selected network options only at the moment. So when it comes to the default authentication method within the Cybrac, ARM templates, you can notice that it leverage upon the uh, access policy based authentication method. So now the question comes whether customers or any enterprises can leverage upon the private endpoint option or not for cyber world. So my answer is why not? So today we will look into the step-by-step -step demonstration. So we will be jumping onto the demonstration. Before I jump onto the demonstration, I just want to share with you, I've listed down total of five steps and we will be following all these steps uh, one by one. And that's how you can make your cyber app wall to be able to communicate with the AKV using the private link option. The first step is we will be creating Azure Key Vault. And while creation of the Azure Key Vault, we will be enabling the private link option. The second step is using the Cyberac Vault images. So we will be creating the Cyberac Vault. The third one is once the Cyberac Vault creation is done, so we will be going to the Azure Key Vault access policies and we will be enabling, enabling in the access policy that hey, Cyberac Vault virtual machine should be able to communicate with the AKV, should be able to uh, perform certain actions. Then we will be doing, we will be copying our license file and the recovery public key into the Azure, into the uh, Cybrac Vault uh, virtual machine. As a last step, we will be performing the Vault registration. So let's jump on to my onto the demonstration. So let me share my 
uh, my Azure console. In the Azure console, as a first step, what we will do, we will create a Azure Key Vault. So I'm clicking on a create. So in the resource group, I have created a, uh, a resource group in advance. I call it a Raj Pass Deployment. In the Key Vault name, I'm going to keep it as a like private link. The private link is not available. Let's try private link testing. It's also not available. Let's try this one. Okay, this name is available. I'm going to deploy this resource in Southeast Asia region, which is Singapore region. I'm keeping it as a premium at the moment. And the access policy, so currently, uh, so, uh, so I'm allowed to perform any kind of actions at the moment. So we will revisit this particular page later on. So then let's click on the networking option. In the networking option, I'm selecting a private endpoint. And then let's click on add. So here also I'm going to leverage upon the same resource group and let's deploy it in the Southeast Asia region. And I'm going to name it as a private link cyber and target resources vault. So virtual network also I have created in advance. So we will be leveraging upon the past VNet and we will be uh, enabling the communication from the vault subnet to, to the AKB. So I'm uh, keeping this vault subnet. So we are keeping rest of the option as default. One side press OK. And then I'm putting an X and then uh, review and create. So once I click on a create, so it take, uh, it take like a couple of minutes to deploy this. So in the meanwhile, we can go to the next step number two. In the step number two, what I have done, I have already uploaded all my images, and we are going to create a virtual machine from, uh, from the past world images. So I'm clicking on a create VM. So once I click on a create VM, so we can uh, name it as a CyberArk vault, private link VM. And then you can define your own username and password. So in this case, I'm defining my own. And then public inbound port, I think we don't have to open anything on the license. So I'm leveraging upon the Windows Server license. So I don't have any license uh, with me. So I'm just uh, going to leverage upon the Azure default option. So then you can click on the next. So once I go to the networking, so on the networking, we will be deploying it, uh, this virtual machine in a password net, and we will be deploying in a vault subnet only. On the public IP, there is no need to have a public IP because we will be accessing the cyber app vault with the help of the jump host. Then I'm clicking on a management. Then I'm keeping rest of the options as default. So here, one thing to take note, we have to enable this particular option, system assigned manage identity, because we will be uh, we will be configuring or we will be assigning the permission to this manage identity only onto the Azure Key Vault. In terms of the update, I'm turning off any kind of update at the moment, and then we will click on review and create. And then once I click on create, it takes like two to three minutes to enable this particular option. So then, so here we can see the private link Cybra has been created. Our Azure Key Vault has been created. So if I go to the access policy, in the access policy, we will be adding our Cybra Vault virtual machine in the access policy. So, so here it is saying the still the virtual machine is getting created. So we have to wait for like another one to two minutes 
And once it get created, then we can start adding in a access policy. So we have seen you now the cyber PM pass fault deployment has been created. So what we can do, we can go to the resource. So once we go to the resource, you can note down the IP address. In my case, the IP address is 10.0.1.5. Apart from that, so what we can do, we can go to the identity. In the identity, uh, this system identity has already been enabled. So now let's go to the site private link cyber arc. In the private link cyber arc, if I go to the networking option, just to show you. So here, uh, if, if I show you the private endpoint connection, you are able to see the private endpoint connection name has been approved and the provisioning state is succeeded. So let's go to the access policy. So here we are going to provide three different permissions. So we are going to provide a create permission, wrap and unwrap key. All these, uh, all these details are listed in the CyberArk uh, website. If you go to the docs.cyberarc.com, you will be able to see all these details, like what are the different uh, permissions uh, CyberArk Vault requires from AKB standpoint. So once it is done, so I'll click on a, on a principle. So now we just have to add the cyber app vault private link VM. So once we add this, and then one, what, what's going to happen? So my cyber app vault will be able to authenticate and will be able to perform three different actions. So once it is done, then we can go to our VM. So once we go to our VM, so what I did. I've already pre-created a jump host. So we will be accessing this uh, VM using this particular jump host. So let's go to the 10.0.1.5. And once I go to this particular VM, so we will create a, another folder. So that's where we'll be we will be copying and pasting our license and the Azure key vault and the recovery public key. So I'm just going to the windows. So let me create another folder for license. So once the license folder has been created, take a couple of seconds here. Let me minimize it. Let me copy and paste the license and the recovery public key. So now I have copied and pasted the license and the recovery public key. Let's go to the Azure key vault and let's note on the vault URI and let's try to do it in a lookup. So once we do NS lookup, you will be able to see it is resolving to the private IP addresses. So here, if you see, it is resolving to 10.0.1.4. And if I do IP config of my vault, it is 10.0.1.5. It means what is Azure Key Vault or Azure is doing behind the scenes, they are, they are injecting uh, one of the network interface uh, pertaining to the private link option. So now everything looks okay. So what we will do, we will move to the next steps. So that is the uh, vault registration in Microsoft Azure. So let me go to the program files, x86. Let me go to the private arc. Then we will go to the server. So let me copy and paste one of the commands.
let me check the FTDN again. It's a private link Cybra. Yeah. So this is the long command. Again, you can find out this command on the Cybra uh, uh, on the Cyber app and docs open. So, so here on the VKM name, I'm just putting a VKM name. I'm, I just copied a FTDN and we, you just have to copy and paste. And then once I enter, it takes like a couple of minutes. So let's see. It took around uh, two to three minutes in my setup. So if everything goes okay, you will be start seeing all these messages, get random byte, get random key, and a couple of all these messages. In my case, everything looks to have gone through okay. And let's, let me click on this, the private talk server. So you, we are able to see uh, it is, this particular service is running okay. So that's what concludes the today's demonstration. So you can follow all these steps. So in case you want to integrate the cyber app world with a Kiwi using the private link option, again, we did everything manually. So feel free to modify the ARM templates if you want to do it, anything in an automated manner. So thanks a lot, everyone, for watching this short video.